Hi dear students, we had finished 11 chapters from the modern Indian history and today we are going to start with the contemporary world history. You may please take chapter 15 and in chapter 15 the things that you have to learn according to your revised syllabus. The first one, the objectives of UN, then the composition of the General Assembly the Security Council and the International Court of Justice. From chapter 15, you have to learn all these things. The objectives of the UN, then the composition of General Assembly, the Security Council and the International Court of Justice. So you may please take chapter 15, page number 227. They are the first paragraph itself. We will get an idea about the United Nations. United Nations is formed in order to save the world from the dangers of war and the threat. The main purpose or the main objective of United Nations it is to keep peace in the world or maintain international peace. So if you take page number 229 there you can find out the Date of establishment of United Nations. It is 24th October 1945 and October 24th is observed every year as the United Nations Day throughout the world. Some of the important points you have to uh, go through the date of establishment and the main objective. What is the main objective? To maintain the international peace. Now we will see the objectives of the UN. So you take page number 230. The purpose and objectives of United Nations as I have earlier mentioned the first one to maintain international peace and security. Second one to save the succeeding generation from the scourge of war. Succeeding that means the future generation from the dangers of war. That is the second objective of United Nations. And the third one, to develop friendly relations among nations. To maintain and develop a friendly relation among the nations. Fourth one, to cooperate in solving international problems of economic, social, cultural or humanitarian character. So the problems related, the international problems related to economic, social, cultural and humanitarian that must be discussed in UN and it is the duty of the UN to solve such a kind of problems. Fifth one, to create faith in human rights and in the dignity and worth of the human beings. To give more importance to human rights and to save the dignity of human beings. And the next one, to promote social progress and better standards of life in larger freedom. To promote or improve the life standards of people. Many people, those who are suffering from poverty or financial crisis in certain countries, they are, it is the duty of UN. The objective of UN is to promote social progress and improvement in the standard, the life standards by giving larger freedom to establish conditions under which justice and respect for international law and international treaties can be maintained certain conditions through which the international respect between the countries and the international treaties can be maintained for what for the better functioning and for keeping or maintaining peace and security throughout the world. And the last one, to be a center for harmonizing the actions of nations in achieving these ends. Okay, now we have seen certain objectives. So in order to attain these objectives, harmonize, unite all the nations, all the nations who are members in United Nations. So that is the last objective to harmonize all the objectives or uh, to harmonize all the nations in order to achieve the objectives of 
UN. So the first and foremost objective that is to maintain peace and security throughout the world. Now we will see the composition of General Assembly. Now you may please take page number 231. Before we start with the composition of General Assembly, you should understand about the organs of United Nations. There are six principal organs. The first one, the General Assembly. The second one, the Security Council. Third one, Economic and Social Council. Fourth one, the Trusteeship Council. Fifth one, the International Court of Justice. And the last one, the Secretariat. And we will learn three principal organs and its composition according to your new syllabus. The first one, the General Assembly. The composition of General Assembly. Only the composition you have to learn. All the members of the United Nations are the members of General Assembly. All the members. Total, how many members are there in United Nations? For that, you may please take page number 229. Membership. The United Nations initially started its work with 51 members at the starting. By the end of October 2006, the total membership had increased to 192. So the total membership of United Nations according to the calculation of October 2006, it is 192. So all the members, all the members in United Nations are members of General Assembly. Now you can just take page number 231. All the members of the United Nations are the members of the General Assembly. It meets every year on the third Tuesday of September. Every year on third Tuesday of September. The sessions continues for two to three months. Special sessions may be convened by the Secretary General at the request of the Security Council or the majority members of the United Nations. So the meeting it is held in the month of September, the third Tuesday of every September and it may continue for two to three months. And the special sessions can be conducted on the request from the members of the Security Council or the majority of the members of United Nations. Each member state can send up to five delegates to the General Assembly though each state has one vote. Each state or each member has one vote but they can send five members to participate in these sessions. You should remember that they have got only one vote but they can send five members. Each state or the country can send five delegates to participate in the sessions. Now we will see about the security council. So only the composition you have to learn, the general assembly composition and next we will see about the composition of security council. Now you may please take page number 232. Security Council Composition It is called the Enforcement or Executive Wing of the United Nations. So Security Council is the duty of Security Council to execute or enforce the laws made by the Council. It consists of 15 members. Five of them are permanent members known as Big Five. China, France, Russia, Britain and the United States of America. These are the five permanent members of UN and there are 10 temporary members. So total 15 members are there in Security Council. On the other hand, General Assembly, all the members or the, all the members of the United Nations are the members of General Assembly. But in the case of Security Council, only 15 members are there. The 5 are permanent and 10 are temporary. And which are the 5 permanent members? China, France, Russia, Britain and the United States of America. The 10 non-permanent members are elected by the General Assembly by two-thirds majority for a term of two years. 
so the first five they are permanent and the next to 10 they are elected by two third majority for the term of two years and after that a retiring member after completing the two years the members which are elected the non permanent which are elected they will retire and after retirement they cannot appear for immediate re-election so once they are retired then they cannot appear for the immediate re-election each member of the security council has one vote decisions are made by the affirmative vote of nine members including the concurring votes of all five permanent members so the decisions made by security council it should be approved by the nine members so, okay the one member is giving one opinion or a decision then all the nine non permanent the temporary members should agree and the five the permanent five members also should agree then only the decision will be enacted or accepted the negative vote of a permanent member is called veto veto it is a latin word which which means i forbid means i don't agree if all the other four are coming with new decision new law and if one country wanted to stand against that one he can use veto power to cancel such a kind of legislation the council is powerless to act if a permanent member uses the veto power but abstain from voting does not mean veto so there is a decision particular decision made in the security council and all the members are agreeing with that one except to one permanent member one permanent member using veto means that law cannot be accepted that ca law cannot be enacted but if that particular country is abstain or abs absent from the meeting then that cannot be considered as veto power and if the country uses the veto power i forbid i disagree with the particular law then the entire law is made by the security council which won't be enacted or won't be accepted so each country that means only the permanent the big five can use the veto power the meeting of the council is held once a month i hope that you got an idea about the security council total 15 members are there and among these 15 members five are permanent members russia china france britain and united nations and other 10 are elected by two third majority for the term of two years and the retiring country or state or member cannot appear for the re-election the permanent member can use the veto power in order to cancel the particular law made by the other countries now we will see the international court of justice and the composition you may please take page number 233 the international court of justice composition the court consists of 15 judges they are elected for a term of 9 years the security council and the general assembly each separately chooses 15 judges out of these those 15 judges who are chosen on the basis of majority vote in both organs are elected as the judges of the court so total number 15 and they are elected for 9 years and both the security council and the general assembly they elect or they choose 15 judges the security council can choose 15 members and the general assembly also can choose 15 members so total 30 judges are there among these 30 those who got majority from both the places from general assembly and the security council those 15 will be elected as the judges for the international court of justice so only 15 members if two persons from the same country elected as the judge for the international court of justice then only the elder one will become the judge of the court the judges are chosen by a majority vote on the basis of their qualification and not on the basis of nationality this is not based on the nationality but based on the qualification of the person the judges are elected 
the president the term of the president the president and the vice president of the court are elected for a term of 3 years they can be elected again after the expiry of the term the term of the president and the vice president of court it is 3 years but they can be re elected after completing their term the court is situated at hague in netherlands but it can hold its meeting everywhere the court has power to appoint its registrar so the center or the headquarters of the court it is situated in hague netherlands but it can hold its meeting anywhere elsewhere so that is the end of chapter 15 so from this chapter you have to mainly focus on the objectives of un and the composition of general assembly security council and the international court of justice and some additional details about un also you should understand and you should study about the date of establishment that is 24th october 1945 and the members of the united nations according to the calculation in 2006 there are total 192 members in un and in the security council there are 15 members among these 15 members five are permanent and 10 are temporary in the international court of justice there are 15 judges and in general assembly all the members of united nations are the members of general assembly and you may please go through the questions given in your textbook and the questions that are related to the topics that we discussed you find the answer to the questions thank you have a nice day